I might be slightly late to the party on this one, but just over a week ago, Kubernetes announced that they are dropping Docker support, and that left a lot of developers very confused about if their applications are going to suddenly shatter and break. And in this episode, that's what we're going to talk about. Thankfully, if you have been keeping up to date with the situation, you probably have seen the headlines from Kubernetes themselves, where they have told us not to panic. So why shouldn't we panic? Well, right here on December 2nd, we got a lovely little article from Kubernetes themselves telling us not to panic and what's the confusion and why is everyone freaking out? To summarize, everyone's freaking out because they were afraid that their dockerized applications were going to suddenly stop working in the new versions of Kubernetes. And if you have been working with containers at all, you will probably think, you know, Docker is potentially one of the only ways to do these things. There is plenty of other ways, but Docker has definitely made containers popular. So this move has confused a lot of people. So let's jump into this article a little bit because I think it will explain a lot better than I can off the top of my head and I don't want to misquote anything. So with the confusion, we're talking about two different environments here and that's what's creating the confusion. Inside of your Kubernetes cluster, there's a thing called a container runtime that's responsible for running your containers. Docker is definitely the most popular. It says Docker is a popular choice, but it's, it's definitely the most popular one out there. In fact, I, I know a lot of people that don't use anything else. And they're just making us aware that there are other options out there here with things like cryo um, and really just saying that Docker was not designed to be inside Kubernetes. So you won't need the entire Docker suite to run your Kubernetes clusters anymore. So they said, Docker was not designed to be inside Kubernetes and ha has caused a problem. So you see the thing here, Docker isn't actually one thing, it's an entire stack. So basically, if you've installed Docker, you'll know it can be pretty heavy and there's a lot of tooling in it and it's a very powerful tool, but it's definitely not something that you need to run Kubernetes. So again, this is just going back to that point and trying to run that home, I think, with this update that you don't need to have installed all the Docker tooling and learn all the Docker tooling just to get up and running with Kubernetes. So if you ask me from as a developer, it's a little bit scary to move away from it, but at least it's probably an easier barrier of entry because you don't have to, or don't feel like you have to learn Docker before you jump into the Kubernetes side of things, which is how I originally learned how to work with microservices and things. So I'm kind of happy about a little layer of complexity being taken away. So jumping back in and they're giving out about Docker isn't compliant with CRI or the container runtime interface. And if it were, we wouldn't need the shim and this wouldn't be a thing. So basically Kubernetes have had to add things to make sure that they could run Docker stuff effectively. And that's why as a result, they're hoping to move away from it so that they can worry about building a better product themselves without having to carry support for Docker the whole time as well. What does this mean for developers? Do we still write Docker files? Are we still going to be using Docker Hub and CI to get our images for Kubernetes? Short answer, yes. So thankfully, Docker is part of the Open Container Initiative, which means that OCI is perfectly fine for Kubernetes to read and use that image. So we will still be able to use things like Docker Hub or that to host our Dockerized images and then Kubernetes can pick it up from there. So I don't think there's too much to panic about other than you will just not be using these two tools hand in hand. So what do you think about the news? For me, I think it's a good thing in the long term because it will lower the barrier of entry to starting to work with Kubernetes. But 
I'm sure I'm going to get crucified in the comments. So let me lo know below what you think. And until next time, happy coding.